It's time for another episode of the Josh Cast. No theme today. No theme today. I'm not doing themes anymore. I'm not doing it. I'm not. I promised myself I wasn't going to do it the first time. I'm not going to do it this time. Every time I bring in a theme and I bring in a composer to write an opening theme for this podcast, it just it's just been a disaster lately. I'm at the end of my rope on what to do with the theme for this podcast. I'm just at the end of the rope. End of a rope. Excuse me. Ugh. Y- yes, can I can I help you? Yes, I, I, was, uh, I was wondering if I could uh, submit my theme for consideration for the podcast. Um, I, I'm kind of in the middle of doing it. I, normally there's an email process. Uh, and then I review it and then and make the decision in advance uh, so that I can get frustrated. So I, I can prepare to get frustrated. I'm, I'm not good with spontaneous frustration. If, if you didn't mind, I'd like to... I'd like to play the song so that uh, you could... Uh, just, you know, if you don't want to use it, that's fine. I, I promise I won't I won't make a fuss about it if you, if you don't want to use it. That's, that's fine. All right. Play the song. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> this is called um, Rondel Number 32. Rondel Number 32. All right, let's hear it. You know what? I'll 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 uh, I'll tell you something. From an emotional standpoint, that's the closest you've hit to the proper tone for this podcast of any composer thus far. It's just, it's like you've found pure angst. I uh, I might have to go with this one. Uh, yeah, this might this might be this might work. This might do it. Uh, how much do I owe? I, how much uh, do I owe you for this? I, I only want you to pay me with laughter. Oh, get out. All right, that's enough of this. That's enough of this. Uh, yeah, I don't know what I'm doing here. There are days where I just don't know what I am doing. And today is one of those days. I was listening to another podcast, You Make It Weird. Uh, it was it's Pete Holmes, and he had Russell Brand on, and they were talking. They were getting very deep into uh, spirituality, into um, bridging, I would say, the gap between, dare I say, a surface definition of what religion and God is and a and how that might uh, really be a blueprint for a higher understanding of what God represents. I can't believe I'm paraphrasing another podcast in this podcast. That's the low that I've gotten to. You should just go listen to it yourself instead of me telling you, why am I advertising another person's podcast? This, again, this is why I like this theme. But at any rate, they were talking, at one point they're talking about Carl Jung and the collective unconsciousness. Uh, or the, and I always, uh, I always enjoyed Jung's stuff. If nothing else, just the, the imagery of it. Always, um, it always fascinated me. This notion of a collective collective consciousness. Is it collective consciousness or collective unconsciousness? I feel like that's two different things. We are the collective consciousness. Welcome. We are the sum understanding of all human knowledge. What's that over there? That is the collective unconsciousness. Right now, the collective unconsciousness 
thinks that it's still in high school and it's worried because it's trying to prepare for a test, even though unconsciously it also knows that it has long since been through college. But for some reason, it still thinks it's in high school. Should I, should I wake it? No, 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 don't, don't wake it, don't wake it, don't touch it. It'll scream and yell and it's... We don't like dealing with the collective unconscious. We try to, that's where we throw things we don't want to deal with. I see. I'm driving past a uh, lady right now that's wearing very floral, very floral pants. Pink flowers all over the pants. Very floral. I can't get I can't get on board with floral patterns. I don't know what it is about it. There's something about the floral patterns. It just it reminds me too much of uh, my grandparents. I don't know. Can anyone pull off wearing floral patterns? I'm not entirely sure. It could rank up there with driving one of those uh, electric scooters. That it, it no matter what, no matter who you are. You put on a floral pattern. That and the Hawaiian shirt. Those are the two things that... When the human race evolves and becomes a collective being, I really think the first step, the first thing to go is going to be Hawaiian shirts. I foresee the human consciousness, this, this collection of energy floating through the cosmos reconnecting with the universe itself in in an attempt to know itself. At one point, thinking about the time when human beings wore Hawaiian shirts and just the entire collective essence going, oh God, what were we thinking? Oh, why did we do that? Why did we wear that? Why did we wear that? Well, we wanted to, you know... We wanted to be on vacation, but we couldn't be on vacation. But we wanted to feel like we were on vacation, so that's why we did it. Ah. We know everything, and even we still don't know why we did that. Very strange. Driving past a red Honda. Listeners familiar with the podcast will know I have, I have a, uh, an affinity for Hondas. My mother told me never never drive a red car. You drive a red car, the cops tend to notice the red cars more than the other cars. So it increases the likelihood that you'll be pulled over. That's what you taught me. So my current car is blue. The color of my outlook on life. Cops pulling over red cars more often. They did studies. They did studies, Josh. Do you know why I pulled you over? Is it because my car is red? No, it's it's because you... Well, it's because you were using a bazooka to blow up another car. Yeah, but I have a feeling if... Uh, if I was driving a blue car, I don't think you would have pulled me over. I, Sir, I... I, I I think you need to step out of the car, please. In fact, for some reason, the fact that I'm being so polite, considering you just blew up another vehicle with a bazooka, is a concern for me. I don't know. I just... I mean, you didn't pull over that other car, that brown car that was shooting a machine gun. Well, yes, but that's because I had... uh, There's only one of me. The backup's not here yet. And between the two, bazooka machine gun, I went with bazooka. That seemed like the more dangerous of the two weapons. That is why I pulled you over. Not because your car is red. I did not pull you over because you're driving a red Chrysler minivan. Now get out of the car. Are you lying to me? I'm not lying to you. I'm not. You shot, you blew up another car with the bazooka should have driven a blue car. Just get out of the get out of the car. Mindfulness. That was another thing they were talking about on the podcast. Mindfulness. The idea of being fully in the moment, being fully present. 
fully in the moment, fully present. Now I'm driving by a Goodwill store, and that instantly makes me feel guilty because I'm not doing enough to help the homeless. So here's my question. If I look at the Goodwill store, and I'm instantly feeling guilty because I'm not doing enough to feel the homeless, is that an example of being in the moment or not being in the moment? Because I would say I'm being in the moment with my neuroses. That's present. Ah, but are my neuroses simply a matter of me not fully being in the moment? If I was fully in the moment, I would have looked at the goodwill and have been fully in the moment with the goodwill sign. Or I would have looked at the goodwill sign, been fully in the moment, then felt guilty, been fully in the moment of the guilt, and then moved on to something else. Whereas now I am thinking about that moment and kind of going back and f- fat back and forth back and forth conundrum that's the deal that's what we're dealing with that is what we are dealing with right now that was another thing they mentioned in the podcast which I, i've heard this before if you meet the buddha in the street kill him all right uh, can you tell me what happened Uh, Yes, officer. First of all, uh, I am the Buddha. Don't, 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 don't shoot, don't shoot, don't shoot, don't shoot. I know you've, I know you've heard, I know you've heard that. If you see the Buddha in the street, kill them. That's what this last guy probably heard too. But I, just please don't shoot me. I've already been shot once. I don't need to be shot again. But you are the Buddha. Yes, I'm the Buddha, Okay. I was just trying to make a point when I came up with that phrase. And now looking back on it, I never thought... I never thought I'd actually have to deal with it in the real world. But here we are. Please don't shoot me. Why don't you just lie and tell people you're not the Buddha? Because I don't want to be a dick like that. I don't want to be a liar. Can you give me a description of the guy? I... Well, um, what did he look like? I don't know. He, I'll tell you this. He drove a red car. I remember that. Make and model. Uh, I think it was a Chrysler. Chrysler minivan. Pretty sure. Hmm. All right. What would you like us to, uh, call an ambulance? What do you mean? Would I like you to call? No, no. Just let me, let me, let, let me die here. That's fine. Just leave me to die. No worries. Okay. I've got a legit question here. Legit question. This is no longer the sketch, by the way. Empanadas. I've seen at least three little shops that sell empanadas. I've had empanadas. I'm fine with empanadas. They're good. But I, I guess I, I don't get how they are good enough that you open an entire store dedicated just to empanadas. And I, don't, I, I, and I, so, I hope I do not come off as being culturally insensitive here. I don't, you know, I don't get it. I don't get that. We do empanadas. Okay, but they're just... Aren't they just really pockets of... They're like... They're hot pockets, right? That's what an empanada is. Am I... Oh, God. I feel like I'm going to get a lot of letters now. Or maybe the one empanada place I went to, maybe they, maybe their empanada place just wasn't... That, maybe they weren't good empanadas. Maybe I am getting a bad sampling of empanadas and making a sweeping generalization about it. But it, I guess... It does. It just doesn't seem like the empanada, as as a singular food stuff, is enough of a concept to have an entire store dedicated just to empanadas. But am I saying that donuts are superior? That's that's a good point. I mean, if I had to choose from a health perspective between a donut and an empanada, I think the empanadas are healthier. The, des- the donut's more of a dessert thing. The empanadas, I think, is a lunch thing. 
So there again, our donuts, you know, I think I'm wrong on this argument. I think I have to concede. I do, I, you know, me not getting it is from, a, I am the one with the problem in this case. There's just no winning the empanada argument. I am the one who is in the wrong. If anyone can recommend the best empanada uh, place in Los Angeles, let me know, and I, maybe uh, let me uh, let me give it a second chance, because you know I I the last thing I want to do is be uh, in the wrong when it comes to empanadas. That is not what I'm looking to achieve here. Not at all, what I'm looking to achieve here. I understand you have a problem with empanadas. No, 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 no. That's that. Did you not listen to the podcast all the way through? I was just saying I, I didn't understand. Like, I don't have a problem with empanadas in and of themselves. I just couldn't understand justifying an entire store to opening empanadas. And then I conceded that maybe I'm, maybe I'm the one with the problem. There's been debate over whether or not we should kill you over this. When you, when you say we, first, well, first of all, I'm terrified. Uh, whatever I need to do to beg for my life, whatever you want, I'll give it to you. Secondly, though, who is we? All of the empanada stores that you know belong to the same organization. The International Brotherhood of Empanadas. For thousands of years, we have been the ones running everything. Really? You? Empanadas? Yes. Because up until now, no one has had a complaint about empanadas. They're delicious. They are filling. They are satisfying. They are cost-effective. And now you come along and you question the empanada in your podcast. We cannot allow this to happen. Okay, so we, maybe we just don't air the podcast or take it down. I, I, whatever you need me to do. You will suffer for this. How so? We will cause your bladder to weaken. Wait a minute. Wait, wait. Please don't do that. Please. I let me apologize. No, no, no. Your bladder will weaken. It will now take you two times to go pee pee instead of one. And every time you go pee pee, you will remember us. And you will know never to cross the brotherhood of empanadas. The brotherhood of empanadas. Who just sang that? Ah, that is our chorus. They travel with me wherever I go. The Brotherhood of Empanadas. Wow, that's... Everywhere. Wherever you go, the chorus is always there. That's correct. Sandra. I'm very proud of your bar mitzvah. We are very proud of your bar mitzvah. Thanks, Harold. He, wow, he really, he really brought the, he really brought the chorus with him even here. I mean, does he bring the chorus with him everywhere? Every, he always has the chorus with him. Every, like everywhere? Yes. Can you tell me that when he was on his honeymoon with his wife, he brought the chorus? Darling, I want you to know something. This was a magical evening for me. This was a magical evening for him. That's, that's very nice of you, honey. We think she's freaked out by the chorus. I, I, I didn't say that. Are you freaked out by the chorus? No, 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 no. The chorus is fine. The chorus is great. 
We don't believe her. No, no, no. The chorus is fine. We think she also has a crush on your brother. Is that true? No, that is, that is absolutely not true. That is not true at all. Why do you think she had you sign a prenuptial agreement? That is not at all the reason why. Yeah, man. Choruses. Got to be careful. Got to watch out for those choruses. They get you every time. They will get you every time. And that's the end of the podcast. Excuse me. I was wondering if I could submit a, a closing theme. No, I don't, I don't do closing themes. Uh, opening theme was fine, but if, if, if I'd really appreciate it. I, I drove all the way from from Riverside to be here for this. All right, let's let's hear the closing theme of the podcast. Well, I'll tell you, thematically, thematically it does fit.